If you've ever bought a mass drop knife, you know that the official mass drop branded knives have a complicated manufacturing hierarchy for people not familiar with knife bullshit. Mass drop ultimately just has a website like Amazon, but with a more artisan social media experience that sells boutique mass produced curated shit. Some are branded mass drop and others are branded by the companies who actually make the product. But ultimately most of the stuff mass drop creates are wait times for internet assholes like myself. For example, the Dow here. Mass Drop had someone else stamp Mass Drop on the blade, then the knife designers at Ferrum Forge designed the knife, and the knife uh, wizards, I'm running out of nouns here, at We Knife actually mass produced it. Mass Drop did the drop part. So the Dow is a titanium handled, lightweight, folding pocket knife that uses S35 VN steel. So there's your review. Okay, it isn't over. Let's look at the overall length and weight. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I wouldn't, but if you do, you know that Nick Shabazz loaned me this knife. Blade size and cutting edge. In real life, though, I thought his wrists would be a little shorter, so I was a little disappointed. Handle size and grip area. He let me take a look at his watch, which, as far as material objects go, I've only bought cars that cost more. Spine thickness and handle thickness. I mean, not much more expensive. I'm talking a 15-year-old CRV here. Tallness is, I take that back, I actually spent more on my transmission repair than he did his watch, so I win. So the Wii manufactured Ferrum Forge designed Mass Drop branded Nick Shabazz Lone Dow as a nice lightweight compact sized gentleman's folding pocket knife everyday carry blade. And if you need any more hyphens, sorry I just used the last ones. It features a blade cut by hand using artisan CNC robot machines using a locally sourced S35VN blade steel. I read some rock solid internet conjecture where some people have theorized on how a few of the S35 VN ferrum forged Wii knives, the blades on them, had stained on a supposedly highly corrosion resistant steel like S35 VN. So that means it may not have been S35 VN or that Wii knives has a weird satin finish that stains easier because it's got more uh, ridges in it. So S35 VN, as you know, is a super steel whose main superpower being the ability to run up credit card debt with internet knife people who rarely use their knives. It's as easy as selling a super steel to a cubicle, bro. The blade is flat ground and with a modified sheep's foot profile, just like the product description says. As you know, most of my job is rewriting the shit I read, so sorry if you thought this channel was something else. So you deploy it by the flipper tab or stud. It's actually called a tab, but I used to call it a stud. Someone had corrected me, but... I've had other people tell me I should never change. So maybe instead of admitting I don't know shit about knives, I should just double down. It's a stud, okay? Or an alternative tab, if you will. The blade pivots on a cage ball bearing system, and while it sounds like something reviewed on Advanced s and channel, it just means the blade rockets out with little effort for even the subbest among us. It locks with a titanium frame lock with a steel insert. The frame lock is a tad stiff depending on your preferences, it's a tad stiff, Elizabeth. Meaning you might get some fidget fatigue if you play with it all day. Detent is strong, so blade retention when closed is pretty good. And an internet tough guy like myself couldn't get it to deploy by flicking it downward. More like an internet loudmouth. Handle is a decent size and one I could live with, but it may be small for guys with jacked hands doing four and a half inch curls all day. The jimping on the backspacer is recessed and comfortable. Now the blade spine jimping is a tad edgier, but let's be honest, you're not skinning a mule with this knife, so I don't know about your hard use. I know, but what if you were forced to in a survival situation? I get it. The titanium machine clip is flippable to the right or left side in a tip-up configuration only. It slides in the pocket nicely without too much trouble. The clip isn't sharp, but some of the edges could possibly create a hot spot in the palm if you do decide to skin that mule. As it is, tip-up, blade backward in the right pocket, it's ideal for a person who's right-handed, like myself. Comparisons. First, the Dow. It's a decent knife. Don't think it's one I'd buy at this point in my knife odyssey, but, you know, it might make a good addition to the collection of someone else who has bad spending habits. I, of course, prefer to buy Kukri's I don't need. It reminds me a little of the CRKT Jettison, which has the bird beak-looking blade with a small handle that's tapered. That one cost about 25 bucks. Had a cheap steel, and the handle was made mostly of peasants' stainless steel. Of course, we all know nowadays any knife dude wouldn't be caught dead with a stainless steel handle instead of titanium. I like the design, I think. Maybe I like that other people like the design. 
And there also is an option to buy this knife in different colors, like one with a green circuit board pattern, which seems more like the kind of bullshit I would buy. Now the HEA Designs Hunter. Compact, lighter, a little more expensive. Got that pointier tip and it's a front flipper. Both are about the same quality overall as far as fit and finish go. You decide which design you like more. And how about a Cold Steel Finn Wolf, right? We showed this one last time and I thought it was a good time, I guess, to show it right now. This one costs about 30 bucks too. Not a good knife if your main usage is fancy hanky dumps with hashtags. A good blade if you need something to use, cheap, as a tool. Not really what knives are made for, sorry, I know. I don't have a lot of my favorite knives on hand right now until I move out of the temporary place I'm staying. Most of my collection is packed away. After another month or two, you'll see the old favorites. All right, wrapping it up. Thanks to Nick for chilling with me for a few hours while we talk knives and whatnot. And if you're wondering, he's just two floating hands with watch holders known as wrists. If you're not subscribed to his channel, Go ahead and subscribe. Okay, I'm just fucking with you. You heard of this channel probably through his channel and you've been subscribed to him for years. Plus, this channel doesn't review any of the newest shit either, so... Some guys are here for the S&M jokes, other guys are here just for the knives, I get it. Oh yeah, that I like the knife. Mmm, I don't see anything wrong with it. If you like the styling and want a decent everyday carry, go for it. As far as we produce mass drop knives, I like slightly larger blades, like my Keen, of course, which is packed away, keeping my Sabenza company. He likes me better than you. I'm purple, and we cuddle. So give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, Patreon me, and a big thanks to Thomas D, who went above and beyond a few days ago with a $20 a month donation. Holy shit. Thanks, dude. I know I don't post on Patreon much, giving anyone any value for their donation or do anything with my shitty Facebook Advanced Knife Bro page, but just so you know, it's very much appreciated. In fact, I just bought $200 worth of slip joints with my Patreon money on knives no one asked me to review, so we'll get to that in a few weeks. Oh yeah, follow me on Instagram where I post pictures of stuff I'll eventually review, and thanks for watching.